last week I had a question from a person with a, a name I don't even gonna try to pronounce because for me it is impossible but I'm sure person if you're watching this video you will recognize yourself now the question was how is it possible that the stroke length on my shape is changing while cutting now first of all this is the bulge bulge with the crank pin before the middle of it is the bulge is spinning that way yeah left if the cutting forces are high or even with a low cutting forces for the moment this crank pin is forced down yeah that's not complicated middle of the stroke the crank pin is forced backwards so no up and down force the crank pin now is forced up so if this crank pin is not really tight there could be a up and down movement while spinning of course on the backstroke this problem is not really existent because there's way less forces on the crank pin to move the crank pin up and down on a shaper there are different systems in the older shaper in the really old machines you have here this little door and then you open it and inside you see the crank pin and the rocker arm and you have to untie the nut move the crank pin up or down to adjust the stroke length sometimes you have lots of uh, wear in all the system so you think the nut is tight but in fact it is not because of the wear of the whole crank pin system on other shapers you can have this system just put the handle on crank a bit to adjust the stroke length this is uh, really easy now of course inside here there's uh, roller bearings or bushings or whatever principle they use I don't know but with lots of wear or maybe not enough oil it could be that uh, this uh, central axle will be a bit hard to turn and then of course it can happen that when the machine is uh, spinning like this that the central axle does does not move which means the stroke length is gonna change welcome in the pimp my late number three uh, one three three okay the plan for today is to continue to work on the tool holder of my lathe and of course the basic idea is to uh, make special setups on the shaper now the job we have to do we have to rework this uh, small surface here because when I put it on a flat surface it's, it's a little bit uh, wiggling around not that it's really important but I would like to have it nice and flat and square now of course the easiest way is to put this thing in a vise but the vises I have let's say just for a moment they're too small to receive this part um, another solution could be to put it this way on the table and then of course bolt it down with t-nuts we take care there's enough uh, hangover here or stick out or whatever you call it and then we work this side this surface to do that I need my extended tool holder to put in here to have enough length to be able to cut both of these small surfaces now we don't have an extended tool holder you know we start from the idea that you just have a shaper and some 
scrap metal and one cutting tool and that's what we're gonna use. If I put the part this way on the table and I clamp it down here in the middle that would be perfectly possible, not a problem, I can do one little face, stop the shape, or go to the other one and then do the second one but the problem will come after. If this surface is finished I turn 180 degrees to this surface and I will be parallel. This will be parallel to this one. If I turn 90 degrees now it will not be square but I want it to be square and parallel. To square up the part after one cut we are going to rotate it 90 and we're going to put it against a stop. Of course this is for the moment just a piece of scrap metal but I told you we're going to use uh, scrap metal and then if we clean it up 90 degrees and pull it like this we will have our 90 degrees. Yeah? Okay, give me a moment, I'm gonna clean up this one. Done. I have this uh, laying around for quite a while now. So I cleaned up this block with my square. I checked indeed this surface and this surface are nice and square. So if I put it on the table well tight and I push my part that way not really that way it will be sitting nice and square I want to start from the idea that we just bought a shaper or whatever machine because it goes for others, other machines too of course and we have nothing so no clamps or nothing so this block we just made in fact it was uh, tied this way with made in Germany clamps because I suppose about everyone has this style of clamps so we're gonna build a wall here and it will be uh, the idea of the two piece vise this one is fixed here comes another jaw with two threaded rods and we'll pull the part against the 90 degree wall it's made in Germany plant real good square it up with a square that will do Just to be sure this block will not move on me while we're cutting, I think I'm gonna add this, uh, these two clamps here, just to prevent it from being pushed out. Now I can put my part in place, push against the fixed jaw, now it's well fixed piece of uh, flat bar, there was already one hole in it and the other one I cut it out for I don't know what reason it was, suppose I needed this uh, little block, so I drilled a new hole. Everything is set up. I put in my shear tool. I dialed in about one tenth of a millimeter. There's oil about everywhere. The stroke length is 100 millimeters. The number of strokes per minute is also 100. That gives me a cutting speed of 15 meters a minute, about. 
Now this should be ideal for the shear tool but since I have this uh, frequency drive I put it in so I can change the cutting speed while cutting and then see what happens. This uh, first two faces are finished. Now the finish is not really brilliant, but for what I do, it's more than good enough. I marked it with face one, of course. Now we're gonna put face one against the improvised fixed jaw. looks like shatter marks in the finish especially on this side here is uh, way better so I'm gonna slow down the machine and see what happens phase one and phase two is finished and if we put a square on it, I know you can't see it on the camera, but trust me, it is square. When you look at the first two surfaces I cut, the finish is okay. It's not perfect, but, but it's okay. And then the second, there's this line pattern in it. And you heard on the cutting tool that this side, for whatever reason, I don't know, is way harder than this side. I think it's a little bit special but we can uh, live with it, it's not really a problem. I had to re-grind my tool. Now that I have two surfaces finished, uh, one and two, they are flat and square and uh, all uh, you need, uh, we're gonna put surface one against the Im improvised fixed gel and surface two nice and flat on the table and we're gonna do surface number three now I'm not gonna bother you with uh, shaping surface number three and four I'm sure you've got a point how we can uh, how is one of the many possibilities of set up this part on the shaper without any materials I finished the four surfaces here and if we use the table as a reference we can see that indeed it is square now you can maybe not see on camera but trust me it is uh, square turned out okay now when I finished surface one and two I had two reference surfaces that I pushed against the improvised fixed jaw now in fact we don't need anymore if we use this surface as a reference and this surface as a reference we do two and we have to rework the other two surfaces we put one surface on the bottom yeah this surface is square and this one is not yet finished all we need is a piece of uh, junk like this one drill two holes in it and we can hold with two threaded rods which make that this surface will be parallel 
with the table, so with the other surface. Turn 90 degrees will be square because it was already square. Hold down again and rework this surface parallel to the table too and square to the other finished surfaces. Of course I'm perfectly aware that the method I used to make these surfaces is uh, absolutely not official. You will find it in uh, no books or whatever. I think even if a real machinist uh, watches this video he's gonna start pulling his hair off but that's not the point. What I pointed out is that if you don't have the right tools to make something it still is possible to make something if you use the most important tool you have and that is your imagination.